Oh hey, I'm out of here walking in snow in May with my brand new ultralight camera bag, which I can't wait to tell you all about it. But before, I have a confession. I am addicted to backpacks and shoes. I've been working on something for the past, gosh, it was February of last year, so it's been a month and a month, a year and a few months. So yeah, I've been working on this thing for a while uh, with Moment. It's a backpack, essentially. And the reason I've made it is because, you see, I used to think that to go hiking, you needed shoes like this. Or simply, you need something like this to go hiking. Well, I was wrong. Obviously, shoes like this are great for some things. Uh, there's nothing wrong with them, but I found that there are far better options to go into the mountains and just hiking. Something like, I've pretty much walked across Slovenia with these. I've put about, yeah, three, 300 miles on these. Um, this is not a La Sportiva ad. Um, Salomon makes some perfectly good ones as well. This is very, very light. It's a piece of art. There's nothing wrong with big leather boots and three-layer hiking boots and ankle support. That's all good for some people. What I have realized is that most of them are not. They get in the way of what I'm trying to be doing and going. So, I've used this learnings in what shoes should do for me. So, to go from here to here. And what I've done is apply that philosophy and this approach to materials, weight, features, and I've applied that to the world of camera bags and hiking packs to make my dream product. I also thought you needed a backpack like this. Padding everywhere and whole kit and caboodle can fit in this bag. And there's nothing wrong with it. However, I would not take it anywhere because it doesn't match what I've learned and what I believe in. The biggest problem I faced is that the hiking world and the photography world were two different things, completely separated, and I had trouble and still have trouble linking it. It's good that I, you know, I can have a massive bag, but there's nothing for it to put my camera in. I just have to sh sort of shove it in there with sleeping bags or my jacket or my stove and it'd take me forever to access it, right? Let me show you what I'm talking about. This is a perfectly good camera bag. Low probe, Power BP 500 AW. The pitch for this bag is that it takes your camera, many cameras, with you into the backcountry. So, I don't know what's in here, but okay, there, there you go. So it's made to take all this stuff into the backcountry. A 1DX with a 1635, a massive zoom lens, hard drive, a 24, some batteries. Anyways, it fits more than I would need and more than you would need unless you're doing some sort of commercial shoot. This bag works, but there's a few problems. And you can see it here. Look at the space for photography. And look at the space for gear. How am I supposed to fit a tent or a sleeping bag or jacket or food in this thing? And it's designed for that. I mean, they sell it as a, it's a, it's a ski bag. Cool. Well, good for a day-ish but not good for an overnight or anything like that because because that's the room you get for your jacket this much right here it's not a whole lot and that's the problem with a bunch of these bags is that there's just no room for anything else than your camera gear and that just drives me nuts another example the low pro whistler bp450 aw2 I wouldn't go skiing with this thing, it's so big. It's got so many features I don't need. Where am I supposed to put a jacket for the day? This is brand new, see? It says, new. It's made by Lopro, it's pretty light. I respect it. By the way, Lopro makes good stuff. It's just not great for the back. This is called the Flipside BP400. Oh my God, look at all this space. Great, where do I put my tent? I'm getting a bit excited. Certainly a good camera bag, but again, there's just a big disconnection between hiking and photography. I think that's it for examples. And throughout the last two years, I've had 
tons of conversations with other photographers who were frustrated by this, and I came up with solutions that involved a lot of DIY and compromises. It's not bad stuff, but the problem is that it wasn't holistic, but I'll still walk you through what I found. So this is a little alpine bag. It's called the Mountain Ascent 4050. It's super light. It has a small little frame in there that you can remove if you want. It's a metal frame. Minimal, right? And it's still a 40 to 50 liters, which is all you need for a few days. I mean, even a week. You can do anything with this size. So I think 45 is the ideal size for a pack. And this one is a bag I really love. Problem is, it's not made for photographers. It's made for climbing. And anything you do to it is going to be a compromise. So this would fit my sleeping bag at the bottom, my pad, my stove, my layers, some food, water, and then on top of it all, I would just usually shove my camera bag, shove one of these little units in here, a little ICU. You know, you can fit a few lenses and a camera, or I would also use a low pro top loader that I would sort of jerry rig to this. You know, top loader goes like down here and I would have my camera off the side. Problem with that is that you should always carry your heaviest stuff at the bottom of the bag, right? Close to your back. If you put, and the camera is often the heaviest thing, so that just makes your backpack a bit dangly and it's also a bit tough on your back, right? And you know, we're all aging. I'm past 30 now, so it starts to hurt everywhere. So I thought there's gotta be a better solution than just jerry rigging all these mountain bags. There's gotta be a permanent thing that just works. But before I show you what I've spent the last 14 months working on, let's take a little trip down memory lane. seconds you know back when I started making photos eight nine years ago ever since that moment where I've been working with digital files and just raws and storage and gigabytes I had a craving and a big desire for making something that was tangible that people could hold in their hands that's why I love coffee so much is because I can come here tinker with the grinder with the machine and make something that people can drink and enjoy and then that I can see the result of my work, and that... I can also taste the result of my work. And that makes me really happy. So, that itch, that craving for the last yeah, seven or eight years of making something physical, an object that people can have and, and play with and use and I can see it in the wild, has finally been fulfilled. And yeah, I don't have any words to describe the excitement of that, of seeing stuff on a computer screen and playing with samples and materials and then having that translate into an object that just functions. Yeah, it's probably one of the best things I've ever done. There's more bags coming, right there. I've got a pretty good idea what these things are. Ooh. Oh yeah, yellow ICU, two yellow ICUs. I've never seen the yellow in the ICU inside. That's what I like about this bag, is that it packs flat in my suitcase when I go somewhere. And then I can put my underwear in here, or whatever, throw it in the suitcase as well, doesn't take any space. And when I arrive, assemble everything and I got a camera bag ready to go. This is nice.
this yellow is gonna pop in the mountains. Looks like we're in some sort of garage here. Let me show you how to fix your engine and clean a carburetor. Okay, the yellow is here now. Let me show you my favorite features about the bag. This is the back door. Let's go with the fabrics, shall we? This is perforated, it means it breathes. Same with the shoulder straps here. Highly breathable stuff. The bag design is actually our design, made to give some airflow to your bag and also work well with the uh, you know camera compartment. Oh, ah, these big pockets here, good for water, a tripod, um, an Allen wrench, a pedal wrench if you need to. You, know, you can put anything you want really. It's a very inclusive bag. You can be a mechanic, a gardener, a physician, an astronomer. You can put a bunch of stuff on these pockets here, and that's what I wanted, is that everybody gets to put stuff in them, even your friends. The fabric of the bag is called Cordura, which, now that I've learned about fabrics, means it's legit. It's sturdy stuff, it has a high abrasion rate, meaning you can drag it pretty much across North America, and it would take forever until it rips, and that's what Cordura does. It's actually been coated with waterproof uh, membrane as well, so, it repels water from getting into your bag. Put your phone, or if you have a full water bottle, this is a bit easier when you're wearing it. Let's say you want convenient access to your snacks. Another little pocket here. And hip, these hooks back here. Yeah, yeah. This is metal. You can actually remove the brain if you wanted to. If you want to do a little summit push from camp and leave the brain behind, no worries. We've got this little flap here. We we'll call it the top flap. And Voila! You can have your ice axe tip going here, and then you wrap the handle around here. Speaking of pouches, now there's a few ways this works. You can either have it go through here, if you're like a minimal kind of guy, you don't want extra anything. So it's good to have your camera inside your backpack, like most of the time, but when you get to the juicy stuff, guess what? You can just throw it in the pouch, have it accessible, and ready to go in, what, three seconds? Let's start a timer. Mark it around, oh, something cool. One, two, three, boom. You can put it where you want too, like, you don't need it, you know. You're like, you know what, I'm gonna keep the camera like this inside the pouch, no worries. You can put that in the ICU. Second way this works is with this little part and a camera clip from Peak Design or Polar Pro. It doesn't matter if you have a Polar Pro or a Peak Design, we've made these little loops here can have your clip going there, cool. You walk around, get your camera in there, cool. Rest against your hip. Here's the camera clip, version one like this. That's like the most traditional. You can rock this one if you like. I don't love it because you can bang your camera against stuff pretty easily. That's why I came up with this. Now let me show you the V2. The pouch comes with this little metal piece here. Piece of hardware, you just stick it in there. Yeah and then you screw it in it. Your little PD crank, we don't want this falling off anywhere. Okay, and now that I know what's up kind of way. Like I'm, I'm pro, trust me, I've done this before. Yeah, look at that. Twenty-four seventy, as happy as ever. There you go. Now speaking of sizes, there's gonna be three sizes, small, medium, and a large. I'm sure you're wondering what size I'm using. I'm using a medium. I am 5'11", about 180 centimeters in European standards. And I'm kind of between two sizes, so I'd recommend, if you like things to be snug, medium is good. If you like, you know, if you're my height and you want something a little more supple, you can go for a large, but I'm rocking a medium. Anything about 5'11", 6 foot, definitely a large. There is actually a nifty chart on the Moen website to choose your size, but I just wanted to share what I'm wearing. Ouch! Right. I know you're wondering about testing. Testing is important. And on that puppy back there, I've put over 230 something miles of walking and running on it throughout all the nine versions 
And I mean, I can't even count how many things we've fixed. 70 little things we've changed. It's, it never ends, but it actually has ended. This is the pre-release version and it works. Everything's been fixed, everything's perfect. This bag is not for every photographer, hiker out there. I think it's made for a specific group of people who value simple things like experiences. Because it doesn't have a massive storage compartment for your camera gear, you just can't take everything with you. And that is a limitation, of course. So I think it's, I view it as a good limitation. That's why I wanted to do it is I make the hardest decision at home where I'm like, oh, I'll take one camera body, one wide angle, one zoom, and that's it. That's what fits in here. Yeah, still. So yeah, 2470 R6, and then I could fit a 7200 next to it. So the idea of this bag is experiences over gear or material. It is, I limit my choice of cameras before I even leave the house. Then when I get there, to this lake, to this mountain, to whatever I'm going, this hut, I just get my camera out and take photos. I don't have to wonder if it's the 50 or the 70 or the 85 or whatever that I want to take out. It's just simple. It limits my problems, limits my thinking, and just lets me enjoy moments more. And that's what I made this bag for. Simple moments of experience, of shared experience in the outdoors, and people who value that. If this bag was a promise, it would be, this is the lightest hiking camera bag ever made on the surface of the Earth, maybe the galaxy, maybe space. It is the lightest, that's it. You're gonna love it. I worked so damn hard to make it happen. 14 months and a couple days and a half work. And it will just change the way you view camera bags and the way you see this. This is a new system, it's a new way of thinking, which is less is more, didn't invent that. But this is less is more for hiking and photography. If I had to sum it up, I'd say that this bag is the running shoe of camera bags. So it goes faster, can go further if you want it to go, and it's just more comfortable and more minimal. It's my dream that you try this bag, and uh, I know you'll love it.